of animals and men. And that, in turn, breed more violent atmosphere into the, the world is surrounding. But mainly, if we do not kill at all, from the animal on, then we would not have violence in the first place. Some of the teenagers of this generation have no respect for parents. Is it because we are not good parents? No, no, I don't think so. It depends. Huh? I wouldn't say all parents are good, but most of them are good. You see, the teenagers probably in this generation have not been groomed enough in morality, in seeing their parents as representatives of God on earth and uh, taking God's place to raise the children and to educate them. If the parents somehow hinder or obstruct the children when they want to realize God, then we can say these are not very good parents. But otherwise, there are not, no such things as no good parents. Maybe the different outlook of our teenagers nowadays because of uh, influence through the bad news <laughs> to violent pictures and through many undesirable means of communication and bad companies, bad influence, bad friends that makes the teenagers the way they are today. So the solution again is we have to go back to the golden age. We have to live, live the way the Bible teaches us to do, the way of nonviolence, the way of love, the way of enlightenment. Then we can bring our children back to their innocence, back to their ethical way of life. And even the children can get enlightenment too, and they know for themselves, and then they will change their way of life. When I was in Melbourne, there was a man, not a teenager, but about 20 years old, he took drugs and all that. A very handsome young man, strong, tall, and intelligent. He didn't get initiation because he was struggling whether he should give up the drug and all that, because we don't allow drug <laughs> in our group. After he decided, and then I left Melbourne. So he followed me all the way to Sydney and throw all the drugs and even cigarettes away at that day. And he struggled hard, struggled hard that day, but then he made it. And then he was so glad that he did. And I'm sure he'll become a good teenager from that day on. He was very positive and happy, and he was melted in the way we love him and took care of him. And he stayed in my place one night, and then we took him back by uh, other disciples' van, by the way, back to Melbourne. So if all of the children know the way of truth, maybe they will choose it, and then they discover love within themselves, and then they will respect the parents more. And then in turn, if the parents are more enlightened, they will be uh, more uh, the understanding, uh, more clear about how to raise their children. That is only my advice, my offer. Are you a master in a line of spiritual masters? You can ask my disciples through their experience if I'm worthy to be called master or not. It's through the life and the examples and the success of the disciples. So please ask them and don't ask me. I can't <laughs> say things about myself very much. But uh, people say, by their fruit shall thou be known. So if my disciples have accomplished something that is worth recognition by you, in a spiritual sense as well as uh, in social level, then maybe you can satisfy your, uh, your own question. Master Ching Hai, how do you feel about abortion? See, these are the social problems. 
It is not easy to say yes and no, but of course I am against it. I vote for life in any government. <laughs> it is best still that we get enlightenment and always adhere to the principle of love and of nonviolence. And then if we truly believe in God and evoke his power, every blessing will be there and we will find plenty of means to satisfy the population. If God meant for the people to be here, he must know how to handle them. It is we who stop the blessing power from God and the nourishing program through our own limited faith in God's ability and that we do not find our own true wisdom in order to handle all this population problem. Therefore, the answer is not yes or no. The answer for me is enlightenment for everyone alike, for every nation, the same thing. And then we don't need to even ask this uncomfortable question, abortion or not. You understand what I mean? I wish we don't even have to raise this question if we are enlightened in the first place. So please help me, together we get enlightenment. We have to clean our world. If you truly love these children, if you truly find no other solution for this, for this problem, then we have to help each other. We have to enlighten our atmosphere more by more and more people standing tall and walking God in this earth, walking with enlightenment, walking with wisdom, doing things with love. Without enlightenment, I can't discuss anything that is truly beneficial because we will be in a mundane level only. We talk about how to feed our stomach, uh, how to take care of this uh, ephemeral body. It lasts only a few decades. What can we, we do about it? We can't keep always identifying ourselves with this ephemeral body and then trying to solve every problem. We have to solve it from the root. We have to see it from the top of the mountain, the whole view, and then to locate where we should do what thing. Is enlightenment not a form of killing a part of you, a part that comes with being human? Should we therefore not rather live life fully and therefore praise God? Why? Do I kill a part of myself? Do you see my arm missing or something? Hmm? Am I looking abnormal to you after enlightenment anyway? Do I appear to? Do I appear to be abnormal? Or lacking something? No. I am more fulfilled now than before. I know how to paint now. I didn't know before. I know how to...